Hey everyone, Spencer the Knowledge Fairon from Sky Sports is ringside toe to toe boxing podcast and hashtag toe to toe. Listen up, give Sporting Icon a follow. So on this video, I want to give everybody a real quick overview of exactly what's happening with the World Boxing Super Series. Of course, there's like a lot of confusion as to when does season one finish and who's in season two, what weight classes, all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna try and cover all that in this video for you. So click that thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe bookmark it somewhere. Maybe put it on your social media page or whatever, just so you can come back to it and find it in case you forget um, as to who's in it. Now, obviously season one, we're still waiting on a date and venue for George Groves to defend his WBA super title. Um, first Callum Smith who's the WBC Diamond Champion and of course the winner gets a crap load of money plus Muhammad Ali Trophy right and two Brits going at it fantastic a super middleweight but as far as I'm aware this fight will not actually be in the UK it would make more sense for it to be because you're going to get more of a pull as in you're going to put more people inside the arena right but the World Boxing Super Series, they're looking at maybe making it abroad, could be Germany, could be wherever. So we're still waiting on that one. But with the other one at Cruiserweight, just to finish off season one, Alexander Usyk, he's going to be going up for an undisputed Cruiserweight Championship against Murat Gassiev. And this will be on the 21st of July. So you're talking just under two weeks away. This will happen in Russia, Moscow to be precise. So once this happens, season one is then completed once we get a date for um, George Groves and Callum Smith, of course. Um, but on the 21st of July, I, th I believe it's the day before, or it could actually be the day after, I'm not too sure of this fight, but it won't be on fight day. Season two, all the participants will be up on stage and choosing who it is that they're going to be fighting because the seeds get to choose who it is that they fight, um, which makes it a bit interesting, of course. Now, season two... It's, going to, it's looking pretty good and it's going to be shown here in the UK, probably on ITV. As far as I'm aware, it's not going to be Sky Sports. But for season one, people in America and other parts didn't get to watch it because it wasn't shown in their country. But now it is going to be um, for Americans who missed out on the first season, didn't get to watch all the cruiserweights and the, and the super middleweights. You're now going to watch season two if you obviously sign up to the zone. Of course you get the first month free and all that kind of good stuff um i'm still waiting on how much it's going to cost i believe it's going to be around about uh, ten dollars a month but anyway so not only for disowned you get all 16 matchroom usa shows and all 16 uk shows but you're going to get all three tournaments from season two on disown as well and um, to have that obviously americans need to have some kind of invested interest in these now from the bantamweight division you may well be interested if you're in America. Maybe this might gain a bit of interest for you. I mean, like me, I knew the super middleweights, but I didn't really know the cruiserweights. Now, after watching the tournament from season one, I know a fair bit about who is the best ones around at cruiserweight. Going into this, all I really knew or heard of was Bradis, Tony Bellew, um, Alexander Usyk, Lebendev, and that was pretty much it on Gassiev, of course. But the rest of them, I didn't really know too much. Um, Mike Perez, yeah, I suppose you could say. But now I'm all right at cruiserweights. So it's a good educational tool, really, to be watching these tournaments. So again, if you don't really know too much about bantamweights, well, you're going to. Because already at bantamweight for season two, as I said, there's going to be three weight divisions for season two, opposed to two in the first one. So the first one of the three will be bantamweight. And we have seven of the eight participants already named. Salani Tete, who is a WBO world champion. Ryan Bennett, who is a WBA super world champion. Emmanuel Rodriguez, the IBF world champion. Of course, Ryan Bennett did actually hold both those belts, but he vacated the IBF. And we have the WBA regular champion, Naoa Inoue. Fantastic stuff. So already out of those four, we have three undefeated champions. Ryan Bennett, Rodriguez and Inoue. Um, in addition to this, we have Jason Maloney, 17 and 0, so undefeated from Australia. Also, a very interesting name, Nonito Donair, just come off of a loss to Carl Frampton. But of course, he's a fantastic, fantastic fighter, Donair. So he's entering this tournament and who knows, maybe he could win this one. You never know, right? Um, he is the senior one so far, 35 years old, but also another senior one in this one is Juan Carlos Payano. And um, 
He's from the Dominican Republic, I believe. So he's going to this with 20 wins and one loss. Now we are waiting on the eighth guy. Who the eighth guy will be, really, really hard to tell. Um, right now, it could be a whole bunch of many, many other ones, right? So I don't know. I really don't know who it could be. Now, it's not that important, to be honest. Already, the Bantamweight is looking pretty good, right? Now, Season 2, again, the second weight class will be the Super Lightweights. And again, this one may be of a little bit of interest to those stateside. Because already we have um, two guys from Belarus. I'm not saying that that's what's interesting to you, but I want to go through the names as already announced. There's five out of potential eight names coming through we have Kirill Relic who is the WBA world champion 22 wins two losses and we have Ivan Baranchek he's 18 and 0 with one draw so these two are from Belarus and we have Anthony Yizhit from Sweden who's 21 and 0 also with a draw and 13 and 0 arguably the favorite to win this one Josh Taylor he's uh, just come off of a fantastic win the other weekend there uh, against Victor Bostal um, and to cap it off, the fifth one announced so far, Edward Trianovsky. Now, again, he's 27 and 1. Now, this is already looking pretty good. But as I said, because he's going to be on his own, obviously people really want to know or be invested in stateside who's actually going to be at the 140 pounder. So we're still waiting on three of them. Um, the other one that we do know, so the sixth participant will be the winner of Regis Progress against Juan Jose Valesco. These two will be fighting this weekend on July the 14th in New Orleans. And this will be for the interim WBC World Lightweight title. So the winner of this one will actually also be in there. So we're still waiting on two more participants. But as I said, while Regis Progress may be of interest to you and maybe a couple of others, I suppose, um, you guys really need somebody else to really get your teeth into. So who could that possibly be? Ideally, somebody like Adrian Broner. That would turn heads, but would Adrian Broner, um, I know he considers himself quite a bit of a star, you know, he hasn't exactly been on a great run, but uh, the likes of Adrian Broner entering this tournament would be something spectacular. Um, I have heard that one of the guys that's going to be in it is going to be an Englishman specific, so not just British, but English, and potentially O'Hara Davis. Another guy that could be on there, maybe what, Omar Figueroa? He could be. Um, Ryan Martin, why not? Um, Trianovsky, which, um, he, sorry, he's already going to be in there. But uh, Jack Catterall, again, he's a very good fighter. Uh, Terry Flanagan, maybe. Who knows? Maurice Hooker. You know, we'll have to wait and see as to what's going to be. But for me, um, I believe that the pull for those in America that's really going to want to um, potentially get to zone to watch this super series for me that it might be the third one that really does it for you and already what going by what Callis Sauerland has said or Callis Sauerland I should um, if I could pronounce it properly is that uh, he said it's going to be a bigger weight than what's already there and he says what he considers a bigger weight is middleweight and above now we know it's not going to be middleweight because a lot of the titles are tied up and he would ideally like the, uh, the likes of Billy Joe Saunders in there and um, Canelo and Triple G but obviously all these guys have like their own things going on plus for the fact they cost a lot of money now the season one each tournament got 50 million pounds I don't know how much they're getting for season two no idea so we're going to probably just go with 50 million pound for each one as well um, so it's not going to be middleweight, we know that. It's not going to be super middleweight because they've already done it in season one. Again, this is what Salon said. It's not going to be heavyweight, again, because you can't get all the top names like, um, you know, Joshua and Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Because, again, a lot of it's going to be money and profile on that, of course. So that rules out three of the potential five weight divisions. Could it be a repeat of cruiserweight? Would you really want to see cruiserweight again? Possibly not. To be fair, again, especially if you're in America, because who Americans, what what great Americans do you have at cruiserweight? I don't know, not many, I would probably imagine, right? It's not a popping division in America is what I'm really trying to say. And again, we've already had it for season one. While it's still going to be a good tournament, if it was going to be cruiserweight, it just seems that like it's almost a complete waste of time to do it again. So why not leave it another year or two, let a few guys come through and then put some new faces in there. Um, so that would leave light heavyweight. 
and that's my pick that's what i think it's going to be so if it is going to be a light heavyweight this one might be the one that's really going to get you guys to go yeah you know what i want to buy this and i want to watch the damn tournament so of course at light heavyweight i know you're looking at what so okay kovalev of course he's going to be going up against um uh i forgot his name alvarez sorry um you've got adonis stevenson the wbc champion you've got dimitri bivol wba champion ibf champion arthur Petbiev. of course he's going to be going up against callum johnson real soon so what we do know is that that fight is going to be on the zone anyway between Betbiev and callum johnson would it be part of the wbss tournament we'll have to wait and find out if that's actually going to be part of it or a separate um you know look at the other names on there i mean arguably jürgen bremer of course he was at super middleweight before and obviously he had he got pulled out of the tournament because of injury you've got badu jack in there you've got marcus brown in there you've got sullivan barrera in there joe smith jr caro murat there's so many names that you could fit in at light heavyweight but i mean that's my pick anyway i, I believe it would be light heavyweight um i don't think it's going to be productive for people stateside to really be want to be watching cruiserweight but hey you never know i could be wrong so anyway i'm getting that news out there for you right now as i said we, that's the phantom weight and um junior welterweight or the 140 pounders depending on what you want to call them and they're still waiting on the third weight class to be officially announced so already it's looking real real good as i said with the bantam weights it's looking fantastic i mean for me this is the standout one so far no doubt about it um who Who's going to be the favourite? I don't know. I mean, if you just look at the bantamweights, I mean, Tete versus Ryan Burnett or against Emmanuel Rodriguez or Anue or Donaire or Maloney or Payanano. Who knows? I mean, Donaire versus Inoue. What a great fight that would be. Ryan Burnett versus Inoue. Ryan Burnett versus Tete. Rodriguez, fantastic fighter. Him going up against Donaire. Looking real good. Anyway, I thought I'd get all that news out there for you so far. So at the, um, the minute we don't have the WBC champion from Bantamweight in there yet, but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe this will be the eighth participant and we can get an undisputed Bantamweight champion. Let's wait and find out. Drop your thoughts below. Click our thumbs up, subscribe, catch you all on the next video.